Hi guys and welcome to another Conservation Chat UK video. Today we're giving you another how-to. So today we're going to be showing you how to do a bat survey in your garden. So it's another stay at home event so you don't have to go anywhere, you can just go out into your garden and survey bats. But today I've got Steph with us um, and Steph is actually ecologist and she works primarily with bats. So she's going to talk us through how a survey actually works. So Steph, how do you conduct a bat survey? So the most important thing that we're going to need to do is just mostly look at when we're seeing bats, so what time we're seeing them, and if we can, try and distinguish between the different bat species. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of bat species would we likely find in this garden? So the most common bats um, is going to be the common pipistrels, um, soprano pipistrels, and hopefully we'll see a noctule or two and there's also the brown long eared bats they're kind of like the most common ones i would say um but i'm pretty sure that we're going to see some pipistrels at least this evening yeah cool okay so um steph's actually put together a survey sheet this sheet will be available on our website so you can just go onto our website and download it for free so that you can conduct your survey from home so um can you just run us through what's on this survey sheet before we can get started yeah, so at the start of the survey sheet, we've got the main details, so it's just the really useful things for collecting data, so things like the date of the survey, the start time, the sunset time, and the end time. Um, and then we've just got a few weather conditions, and if you're a bit more serious and you've got a bat detector, um, if you just pop down what detector you're using. And then getting more into the survey, the most important things to record are the time that you've seen the bat, if you can distinguish what species, but if you can't that's absolutely fine because it's still brilliant to just know the presence of bats. Kind of like um, observations just generally of bats yeah. in your garden rather than knowing exactly what the species yeah. is. So if you've seen a bat you could just pop the time down and that's still absolutely fine. Um, and then if you do have a guess at the species if you just pop down, we've got on our sheet like a confidence level, so just so we know sort of how sure you are. Um, the method of detection is useful, so did you see it or did you just hear it or was it both? Um, so if you've got a bat detector, that's useful. Um, and then you can also note down like the frequency, that can be useful as well if you're not sure what species of bat it is. Later on you can go back and have a look at the frequency. Oh, okay, I think that could be that bat. And then just a few notes that are useful for just more like the behaviour. So was it flying along the tree lines? Um, was it like foraging? Did you hear feeding buzzes? So things like that. Cool, cool. So all of that is available on our website to download. So make sure that you go and get those. And we're going to make a start. Okay, so we just want to go through um, some bat detectors. So if you are a little bit more advanced and you've got the equipment readily to you, we're just going to go through our equipment and show you what we've got um, but you can basically do this without a, any kind of detector or you can use a bat detector it's completely up to you we've got three bat detectors today um, so to start we've got the good old magenta bat 4 so this one is analog so it is quite precise um, and all you have to do is turn the dial you turn it on you can hear the white noise but for the sake of this video i'm going to turn it off um, but you can turn it to the correct frequency. So another thing that's really useful to have when you're doing a bat survey is a list of all the bats and their frequencies. So when you've got your bat detector, you can try several frequencies and find out which bats are in your area. So we've got this one to work with today, but then we've also got the next one up from that, which is another magenta bat detector. Works exactly the same, so it turns on, if you can hear Cracker in the background, he's gone a bit crazy because it's, <laughs> it's nearly sunset. But this one's a lot more precise because it's digital. So it actually tells you exactly what frequency you're on. So this is probably a better option if you're gonna get a bat detector. But then we've got a really cool one. And um, this is your more pricey detector, but this is a little dongle and it's called the Echo Meter Touch 2. So you buy this dongle, I think it goes for about 200 pounds and all you have to do is download the corresponding app on your mobile phone plug it into where your charger would usually go and then you open the app and this thing's amazing because you you set it to start recording 
And you can see on the screen here that it picks up any bat frequency that's in the area and shows it to you on a spectrogram and also records the sound. So this is a really advanced and really cool uh, bat detector because also it's so small you can literally just put this in your pocket and keep it on you at all times in your bag if you're an uber geek and you love bats and you just want to always be able to pick them up wherever you're you know wherever you are this is a really good one to have so those are the free bat detectors we're going to be playing with tonight and picking up bat frequencies and these also allow us to be basically i don't know maybe 80 to 100 percent sure of what bat we're actually recording or seeing so it's just another thing to think about if you're doing a bat survey that one of these might be a good idea to um to go and purchase So it's 2018 and we just started our bat survey. So um, Steph's the expert and she said that it's best to start 15 minutes before sunset because sunset's like the ideal time that bats start to come out. So it's important that you get ready and get out 15 minutes beforehand and get all your equipment set up, etc., and get your forms filled in, whatever you need to do, and then you can get started. So we're really excited and hopefully we'll see some bats really, really soon. Our garden is really great for bats. We've got loads of trees, we've got loads of hedgerows, and you might even be able to see in some of the shots, we've got loads of bugs and midges floating around. We've also got a nearby woodland, and bats use that to navigate their way across the landscape as they're locating food in the evenings and are out hunting. So we're 20 minutes into our bat survey and we've picked up our first pipistrelle. Just run right over us then. We're flying so close. And it's just, it probably doesn't look it because we've got a torch shining on our faces so that you can see us on the video, but it's just light enough at the moment that you can still see their silhouettes flying in the sky. Okay, so how would you just like phonetically describe a pipistrelle bat sound? So they kind of sound like wet slaps, I would say. Yeah, like That's clapping. Quite, yeah, like like a really wet slap. It just kind of <laughs> they're like, like a wet round of applause. Yeah, that's exactly what you need to listen out for, and that'll be your common pips or sopranos. So can you tell when they they've echolocated, say, a fly or an insect? Can you tell when they've like managed to catch that insect? So you probably be able to hear like the little feeding buzz so it kind of, at the end of their kind of wet slaps you'll hear like the little it just sounds like a little a, a wet fart I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's kind of called like a feeding buzz so that's when you know that they're just about foraging which yeah. they're definitely doing in this garden because there's midges everywhere yeah our garden is a hot bed for insects because um, we, we like to keep it fairly wild. If you've checked out any of our previous videos, you may have seen our BioBlitz video or our Bug Hotel video. Uh, video. So we've got loads of bugs. I mean, you know, mainly woodlouse, but <laughs> we've got midges and we've got beetles and bugs. And um, that basically is the foundation for a, a healthy ecosystem. So um, that means that we've got bats and we've got slow worms and we're hoping to uh, pick up some other uh, some other species on um, footprint traps but we're going to share that with you at a later date so stay tuned for that one but something I wanted to ask you Seth is what what can we do to kind of encourage bats into our gardens so there's a few things that you can do and they're all really easy 
So like this garden, it's just really natural and wild. So that's like a great environment because there's lots of sort of overgrown hedges, which they love to commute along. Um, you've got a little pond as well, so you could create little mini wetland areas that attract loads of insects and midges. And another great one is to plant night scented flowers. So Love that one. They are brilliant at attracting bats. And we're going to do some more content on how to attract some light scented flowers. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so you can probably tell that it's the next day now because it was getting too dark to film. So we're just going to film this little outro for the video and just kind of share our findings with you guys from the bat survey that we did last night. So what did we find? So we had a lot of pips or a lot of bat passes I'd say from pips because I think obviously we can't be sure but we had two or three that were just constantly overhead. Um, and we had, we picked up one soprano pipistrelle, so mostly common, and then we've had one soprano as well. Okay, and the soprano is a slightly higher frequency, isn't it? So yeah. If you're on your bat detectors, um, it's about 55, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So the majority we got on our sheet was common pipistrelles, and uh, we caught a lot of them on the detector, but we were seeing them swooping above our heads, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, so... If you want to have a look, this is our completed survey sheet. I don't know if it's properly like focused, but it's really simple. Just go out into your garden, fill out this sheet. You don't need a bat detector, but if you really want to get geeky and really professional about it, get yourself a bat detector and um, make sure to go onto our website at www.conservationchatuk.com. And on there, there's a there's a page um, dedicated to our bat surveys so you can go on there and download a free copy of this survey sheet so you don't have to type up anything or get you know nifty on excel or on word or anything we've done it all for you so all you need to do is get out in your garden survey some bats note it all down and send us your results and we'd be really interested to know what you've been um, finding in your garden so Thanks very much for watching, make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and all our other social media channels and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.